Are we on? I think we're on. We are. Good morning, everyone. I can never tell when we're on, when we're live. But I'm hoping, <coughs> excuse me, I'm hoping that you uh, you can hear me. You're out there. You're all out there and uh, that we are getting cracking. All right. Today we have a couple of things going on. Al, as he did last week, will be joining us at some point this morning. I know we've had emails from some of you saying it was a bit crackly or a bit tinny and i'm sorry maggie i know that you particularly <laughs> found it tough um but we're hoping it's going to get better we're really hoping it's going to get better and we do need al to come in with us because of all sorts of stuff going on all right so first of all this morning i'd like to say Good morning to my spirit guide, Gregor, who is standing to my right side and to my far right. Yes, we have Carolyn. Say good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Carolyn. Never fails. She never fails. Oh, consistency, consistency. All right. So um, today, yes, we're going to be taking live questions from you. We've had quite a few, uh, but, you know, we're going to be watching all of you as you come in with your live questions. We're going to answer as many as we possibly can. Um, but uh, we're talking about the competition. I shall mention it later on this morning as well, but I'm going to mention it now because uh, as much as we tried and as much as we're doing our very, very best, we, uh, we finally have an idea of what the competition is going to be. And I will tell you more about that later. I will also tell you that um, the prize will have three three prizes or three winners, if you like, and those winners are going to get the opportunity to uh, online with me either. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. Either by Skype or FaceTime, uh, they're going to get to ask one question of me on a personal one-on-one -on -one basis, and I will answer that one question. Um, and the 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 question has to be in one part only but we'll talk about that more as we go along and our one-on-one -on -one will probably be 15 20 minutes something like that so that is the, your opportunity to actually talk to me personally about one of your personal issues you cannot participate unless you have subscribed so subscribe 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 it's very easy to subscribe and it costs you no money whatsoever you just click on where do they click the little red subscribe button. there's a little red subscribe button on your screen screen and wait a minute let me do that again there's a little red button on your screen and all you have to do is click on it I don't know where it takes you to, but I think you just click on it and then you're subscribed. And I think it's as easy and as simple as that. So, again, you are not entitled to join the competition or to participate in any way in the competition unless you are subscribed. Our subscription numbers are climbing rapidly and we're very grateful to all of you and we hope you all are having fun with us. I do believe that we have Al joining us now. Al, are you there? I am here getting set up. Yes. Oh, great. You sound good, actually. No tinniness this week. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Great. All right. So, um, Al, I don't know how much you heard, but we're talking about the competition. The competition is going to be the, the, um, the due date for all entries or the end date for all entries is what is it, Carolyn? March 22nd. March 22nd. And uh, so you have to have all your entries in by then. Now, I think I'll do this in a little while when we've taken some questions because I know you're all impatient to get going with the questions, but I want to describe what it is you have to do. It's very simple and very easy what you have to do in order to uh, enter our competition. All right, so uh, before we go into that, Carolyn, would you like to start us off with the first question, please? Sure, we've got a lot of people waiting. Bailey says to tell you that she loves, uh, or he loves your blazer. Oh, it's a little jacket, actually. It's a little pinky tweed jacket. Thank you. Uh, they have a question. I hope you are all well. I hope this makes sense. Is it true that if a person dies a traumatic death, is it possible for them to not fully cross over and become trapped? Yes, it is. My Uncle Mark fell down a flight of stairs a few years ago and was in a coma for months before finally dying. 
do you believe he crossed over fully? Well, actually, is it Bailey? Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, I know he did because it, according to the gentleman standing looking at me and according to my spirit guide, Great Eagle, I'm told he's safe and well. Yes, it is possible. And in fact, if you read, oh, I'm not sure which book it's in now. I think it might be The Eagle in the Rose, but I'm not sure. There, I do talk about, um, we call it rescue work and very, very few mediums. It's very rare. Rescue work is a very rare thing and only a has very small handful in fact maybe even a half a handful of mediums do rescue work because it's 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 tough and uh it's hard and it's a strain on the medium and it's uh, you know and uh, aside from that it takes a special and a certain skill and it also takes a very very strong uh connection to the spirit world and uh, in my case uh gray eagle helps me with our rescues but just because a medium does not do rescue work does not mean that our angels aren't there, out there and doing their own rescues. But if you want to know more about rescue work and mediumship and connected to rescue work, uh, um, I, I think I think it's in The Eagle and the Rose. I think that there are a couple of stories in there and in the, the other books as well. And you might want to sort of go uh, go ahead and try and, and find the stories there because they are fantastic and amazing. But let me just be really clear for the most part 99.9% .9 of all people who die a traumatic death uh, find their way with the help of their angels they will find their way home they will find their way to that safe place to a place where God is and where the light is it's only in, in extremely rare and unusual circumstances that someone might get trapped but they get trapped not because because um, of of anybody else is doing they they get trapped because of their own feelings and their own you know their own fear of of crossing over and in those cases very rare cases in those cases they need someone an angel or in in the case of the the rescues that I've participated in a medium uh, they'll need uh, someone who can help them to overcome their fear and to help them to step forward and to go forward into the light. So, you know, it is not because someone else is preventing them from going over. It's because, you know, they, through their fear and through their nervousness, are perhaps afraid to take that final step towards the light. And we just have to give them that gentle shove. Great question. Thank you. Is it Bailey? Thank you, Bailey. Actually, May Matthew. Matthew. Bailey was Matthew's dog's name. I recall from <laughs> okay. last week. This is tough stuff. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Matthew. Great question. And for anybody out there who's thinking, you know, someone they know had that violent death, please don't worry because our angels are there on hand and they do help. I needed that experience to know what it was like when people got trapped to, to, to make me a better medium and to make me better at the work that I do. But I'm not the only one. And there are angels out there who help us. So please don't, all of you out there, don't be afraid. Don't be thinking that the one you love is stuck in some way because there'll always be an angel around someone to help them whenever they're ready to move forward. Okay. Next question. This is from Priscilla. Priscilla. Do people in the spirit world have houses like we do? Good Where morning. do they live? Good morning. What a great question. We could spend... How I, I, we could spend days discussing this. Um, so it's a great question, but I'm going to pass because they do have, you know, they do have lives and each individual chooses a different place, a different space, a different way of living. So, you know, you cut, it's not you know, just the same as in this world here. Some of us choose to live in a house. Some of us lose, choose to live in a field. Some of us choose to live on the beach. You know, everyone has their own choices and their own way of living and their own way of going along there. Um, I've never seen, I'm just trying to think, I'm asking Grey Eagle here, I've never seen bricks and mortar when I've visited the spirit world. That doesn't mean to say there aren't, but I've never seen bricks and mortar. So uh, let's move on to our, but a good question. Thank you for asking. Good, let's move on to our next question. Shall we? Shall we have, Al, can you give us a question here? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, so this, this question is from Val, and it's about reincarnation. Uh, 
they were taught that uh, in the spirit, a spirit has to be on the other side for a hundred years before reincarnating. Is this correct? So it's really about reincarnation. Okay. And it's from Val and no. Val. Val, yeah. Uh, but I, no, I'm saying no, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think it's correct because what is time on in our world is a completely different time in the spirit world anyway. So you can't say 100 years because 100 years here is, you know, one space of time. 100 years in the spirit world, is, is time is a completely different concept. But no, not everybody reincarnates. You can choose to if you wish. This is my understanding, but I'm not, you know, I'm not... Uh, you know, I don't claim to have, you know, true, real knowledge. I have some knowledge. Wait a minute. What am I saying? I don't claim to be an expert in the field of reincarnation. I do feel, however, that there's so much nonsense talked about it. And so many people sort of make it up as they go along, basically. Because, you know, none of us really knows. My understanding from Gregor, who's put his hand on my shoulder here, so my understanding from Gregor about reincarnation is that we can choose to come back here and do this all over again, or we can choose to move forward. And there are many universes. You know, we have just, we're in this little space. Our universe is this little space. that many universes out there we have lots to choose from. We have a whole wide range of things that we can do and places we can visit and so on. So my feeling is <clears throat> that I probably will choose not to come back here and do this all again because I'm, I'm an explorer and I'd like to go out there and see what else there is to do and to see. But no, I don't. the 100-year rule, I can, I'm looking at Greg and I can definitely say, no, that one is not correct. And remember again, time here on this earth is a completely different concept to time in the spirit world. So no. Um, Al, let's have another question from you, shall we? Sure. This is actually a, a really great one, I think. Uh, <laughs> any, any tips on how to remember messages from loved ones in your dreams when you dream about them? Yes. That's a great question, and it's so funny because I was talking to somebody about this just a couple of days ago. How nice is that? The tip is if you if you are uh, receiving or connecting with someone in the spirit world in your dream state or your I, I like to think of it as your sleep state rather than dream state because I, I think there's a there is a difference. But in your sleep state and you're connecting with someone in the spirit world and you want to you, you know remember that. The tip is this, always take a pen uh, and a pad or a pencil and a pad to bed with you at night time because when you wake up in the morning is when you have that for when you wake up, however it, it is, you know, you wake up after this experience, the immediate, the memory is immediately there and you remember what's happening and it is a pen and a pad by your bedside table, scribble down whatever you can remember doesn't have to be in perfect English, just jot it down, just scribble it down. Because, you know, we can guarantee that as soon as we're fully awake, we're only remembering a part of it. And before we know it, it's gone completely. And we're saying to ourselves, oh, we, you know, we had that, we had a dream. Yeah, what was that? What was that dream? <laughs> it's like, we, we can't remember it at all. We can only remember little bits and pieces. So the tip is to take a piece, a simple a pad and a pen to bed with you. And even if you wake up in the middle of the night, but you feel that something's happened or you're hearing something or you're connecting with someone, just write it down. And, um, you know, if you've got a clock by your bedside table, it's always helpful as well to, ch to check the time. Because for some people, not for everybody, but for some people, it will, the time, you know, it, it say one or three or whatever it is in the morning, that might be your time when you, your sleep is set to a point where you are much more aware of what's going on around you out there. So, you know, check the time and see if there's a pattern going on there for yourselves. That's what I suggest my students do. Let's have our next question from Carolyn. Joyce wrote in. Good morning, Joyce. And she asks, this is kind of a short version of her long question. My father passed away, and I wasn't able to see or speak to him much in the last years due to his wife. Does he now know that it wasn't my fault and that I loved him? 
Uh, I'm looking to Gregor for this because I could just blithely say, of course, of course, and yes, and it might make you feel better for all of five minutes. And then you'd be wondering again. So I'm asking Gregor, where, sh where should we go with this? Because, you know, s not everybody is content in the spirit world. People have all sorts of issues in the spirit world. So I'm asking uh, Joyce, um, you know, if Gregor could give us some insight on, on your dad and uh it's unusual this because um you know because i don't give messages on this show which is a joke really because i do sometimes as you all will know but as i'm as i'm uh, talking to gray eagle i am very much aware my living room is getting more and more full as we're speaking here but i do feel that there is an older man who um uh, I'm, for whatever reason i'm told he's very stubborn Joyce, so I'm not sure it was entirely your his wife's fault. That would be your stepmother or something, right? Uh, I'm not sure it was entirely his wife's fault. I think you know that uh, that um, you know your father can take somewhat of the blame for this because uh, you know he should have made sure that uh, that he spoke to you. But you know we do things in life that we we often regret and I do feel that your father does regret very much that he didn't make a stand let's say that he didn't make an effort but you can't just blame his uh his wife for this because you know they they're, they're both in this together that's all I'm going to say for that and if he'd have kicked up enough fuss etc etc you may not want to hear it darling I know it might be painful to hear it however I do feel I have him here with me right now, and I do feel that he's blowing your kisses and very, very much would like to make amends for his part in the situation. Is he safe and well? And again, Gregor has his hand on my shoulder, and there's a big resounding yes. But I feel that he visits you often. I think he knows that he's, you know, his mistakes and regrets his mistakes. Uh, but I do also know that he loves you very much. He may not have shown it in his later years very as much as you would have liked to have had him show it, but I do feel that he's here for you now and has taken this opportunity to send you his love and to tell you that he really is okay, so stop worrying about him. Okay, I hope that's helpful to you. All right, uh, now, uh, before we take another question, I'm going to tell you a story. This is for the competition right are you all ready you might want to get a pen and a pad and make notes all right oh, oh well actually no just rewind and watch it again and uh, that, that'll be fine all right i used to do this with my students it's called it's an exercise called the three chairs okay so i would take a student and i would put them in the chair and i would ask the student to tell me a story uh the saddest story, the worst, the most awful story possible that, that would make me cry. So we call this the crying chair or the sad chair, okay? So uh, I, the student would have to tell me a story. There is a rule. The story had to be about themselves, a sad story about themselves, okay? And they had to, they had something like five minutes to tell me this story. And we all have a sad story. Every one of us has a sad story. Some of us have worse stories than others, but we all have a sad story. Okay, then now, you know, metaphorically speaking, I would then put him in the happy chair. And he would have to tell me a story that would at least make me smile, if not laugh, but at least make me smile. And it had to be a happy story, a really great happy story. However, here is the rub. That story had to be the same story as the sad story. But now he had to tell that story looking at the best of it instead of the worst of it, looking at the things that we could smile about that were humorous. Because in every sad story, if you work at it and you try hard, there is always some humor. You might be thinking, oh, God, all right, by now. Okay. Now, remember, there, this is called the three chairs. So he had five minutes to turn his sad story at least into a happy story 
or at least partly into a happy story or you find something funny or happy about that sad story that you can relay now, okay so or relate i should say now we come to the third chair the third chair is called the inspirational chair and yes uh, the student would have to tell me a story which would inspire me remember he has to please me because i'm the teacher here the story has to inspire me it has to give me hope it has to somehow make me feel good yes the story is the same story the same sad story the same happy story and now the same inspirational story so basically you're looking at a story of your life a story which is very very sad very painful but if you're looking at it in a positive way can at least make you smile and make you feel good and happy and yes and that same story then has to inspire me so that I know that you've gone through because this is life this is how our life is bad things happen to all of us sad things happen to all of us but our attitude is everything and if we take our sadness and our pain and we use it we can see the good in it we can see the bright side of it we can see some humor in our sadness and our and our losses yes we can we can look back on that sad story and we can see how we have changed because of that sad story and then we can take that same story and be inspired by it this is called life it's called positive thinking it's called taking something that is sad and painful and turning it around to make it work not only for you but to inspire other people with that pain this story this whole thing can be no more than 500 words long do not write pages and pages because we won't even read it which means you'll be disqualified completely so no more than 500 pages long and i'll repeat what you have to do i promise but you can replay this bit anyway i'll repeat it if you any of you out there have questions or you're in doubt as to what i'm asking you to do for this competition fire those questions off either now live or send us an email rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com it's a brilliant exercise for all of you but it's also a brilliant exercise for us i will be reading out unless you ask me specifically not to but i won't necessarily mention you know names or anything but we'll be reading out the three stories that have either made us cry the most laugh the most and inspired the most yeah that's it or there's there is no or so we'll be reading out those three stories that we choose from all of you so get thinking get cracking start making your notes nothing comes easy if you want 15 to 20 minutes of my time you've got to work for you got to earn it <laughs> plus i want this competition and the results of this competition to be inspirational for everybody else who watches our show so do your best all right shall we have al another question so Val asks about um, the spirit and what they see um, and wants to know if they see even intimate moments with your partner, spouse, mate. What? <laughs> so Val asks, Val asks what the spirit world sees. Do they see everything, including kind of intimate moments with your partner or mate or, or spouse? Val. Oh, Val. I love this question. Of course they do. Don't you know my story? When I first realized, this is a true story, true, true story. When I first realized that um, how much the spirit world could actually see and actually be a part of our lives, I started using bubble bath in my bath water. That is a true story. And um, I take showers nowadays, so I can't do that. But here is the good thing. Don't worry, Val. Your private moments are probably not intruded upon because, believe it or not, the spirit world has far more better things to do than watch us sort of in our moments. We hope, anyway. Uh, 
don't let it put you off having a loving relationship with your partner, please. Um, yes, the spirit world sees everything, but, you know, they leave us to our privacy too, uh, most of the time. <laughs> I'm being naughty now. That was a good question now. Right, uh, Carolyn, do we have another question? We do. <laughs> Real quick, Tanya wants to say you're such an inspirational person, and I now have a favorite day of the week, Thursdays, because I look so forward to to listening to all your positive messages. Did Tanya get my email yet? <laughs> <laughs> You've got an email coming to you if you didn't get it yet already. Tanya, I love you to pieces, darling, and thank you. All right, next question, because that re really wasn't a question. No, no, no. I Do we have any yes. comments or anything um, from anybody who already asked a question yet? Well, we've got Albertine. She wrote Good in. morning, Albertine. What can the spirit world tell us about post-traumatic stress disorder, and can the spirit world help? Well, the spirit world can always help us with any of our issues and problems. We just have to learn to lis listen, Albertine, which is not so easy to do. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder is an awful thing. It's a horrible thing. Uh, my daughter suffered with this and uh, when she was very ill a few years ago. And um, it took everyone in the family and every, all, the, all the friends everyone it took when i say family there's really only me actually but you know what i'm saying it took everyone who knew her and loved her and everyone who knew and loved me to support what was going on with her and it felt like it was forever and ever if you know someone who's got postpartum or post whatever it is stress disorder email us we'll put them immediately onto our healing list while i'm thinking of emails if you want to be on our emailing list please email us rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com because then you'll get all the information about the, um, the competition you'll also get all of the information about um what else about the the uh, all the stuff that we're doing uh and all the stuff that i'm doing with al we're almost there we're hoping to start our classes in march or april if you want to know more about that please let us let us know I'm going to talk about that in a minute as well with Al. We're going to have a little conversation about that with Al to let you know how we're going with that in a few minutes. Um, but uh, the spirit world can always help us, and they're always there and to try and comfort us. But in these cases, unfortunately, you know, uh, the spirit world is looking for us to help ourselves in so many of our issues, so many of the issues that we have you need a good healer if you've got one locally who is this albertine uh you need you know s someone who has uh, postpartum depression needs a good they need a good healer they need someone to listen to them but they also need someone to move them along so my advice is to find a really good therapist to find a really good healer and to not let this slide don't don't leave people who have this depression don't leave them into following their own stuff try if you can if you have any influence at all try and get them the help that they need because this is not a one-man job okay uh <clears throat> excuse me let's have our next question shall we um al so uh it's uh i believe it's called val valicious says it's not val there's about to val too so val valish um, he uh wants to know about uh, demons angels um, are, are demons real and um, are they here on earth uh, with us? Okay, Val Delicious. Um, I'm not sure if I said that right or not. Uh, you need to read uh, the book A Matter of Life and Death. The author is amazing. That would be me. Um, you need to read A Matter of Life and Death because there's a story in there about um, uh, about evil and yes i know we don't like it and we don't like to discuss it but if we know about it and we understand it better we're more able to protect ourselves if it ever comes upon us um so yes there are dark forces out there of course there are and there are dark forces who walk this earth but there are ways to uh, help ourselves and the ways to combat that and there are ways to protect ourselves uh that's that's what i'm going to say about that then um al let's just talk a little bit about uh, the um the the stuff that we're 
uh, sorting out and getting on with uh, we talked about uh, membership what we're doing is we're actually going to be sending out an email to everyone um, to uh, like a little survey to see what sorts of things you you all would like to know about uh, what sorts of uh, things that you know you would like to see that, that we're going to be talking about because you know we're going to take notice of what you would like for us to do we are thinking at the moment that we're going to be uh, having a membership because we're trying to think of a way that people can do this without you know hurting their pocket too much so we're thinking about having a membership and are we thinking about the membership fee it's around 25 dollars al is that what we're thinking yes that's around what we're thinking yep so between 25 30 dollars a month a month a month which is actually 25 dollars is something like seven even less than seven dollars a, a week i can't remember what i worked out in my head the other day but anyway there we are um so so that's probably the price of a cup of coffee and for that membership and it is a monthly membership for that membership you get the chance to uh join a class um once a week an hour class once a week and every month we're thinking of a two-hour uh q a just just for us not on youtube just for those of you who are members uh, how are we going to do this what kind of forum are we looking at here so we're looking at a, a video conferencing forum that can basically um hold uh, a larger number of people so that there's face-to-face -face interaction within the video conference right um, and, yep, so, and then, so basically people will be seeing me face it's like face-to-face -face thing so I don't know how that works, but Al's going to sort that out. So for twenty-five dollars a month, you have the uh, twenty-five dollar membership a month. You have uh, the opportunity to join in our classes every week and a Q and A at least, you know, probably once a month, a two-hour Q and A once a month. You will also have an opportunity to uh, join. It. We're going to have other speakers. We have someone who's a masseuse, but she's also a healer. We're going, she's going to be talking about how you can give children healing and the best things to to work with children we're going to be having you know all sorts of different people opportunities for different guests we're also going to be uh doing um a wellness uh program uh something a once a day program al do you want to quickly mention that uh, i think can we wait on that rosemary oh. Can wait on anything you like darling um yes uh so we're going to be doing um also we're going to be um offering uh sort of larger forums where i'll maybe be giving messages or be talking uh and it'll be a, it'll be some kind of a forum where almost it's almost like you're coming to visit me in a hall so we're going to be doing those as well from time to time and you will if you are a member you have an opportunity to join in with those and and those we some of those things we may charge more for or or not we, we're still working it out again if you are interested we're going to be starting this around between um march and april for definite and if you're interested or you'd like membership um just email us rosemary rosemary altea and uh you know we can get you started and get you included in what we're doing all right carolyn let's have another question shall we Adrian asks. Good morning, Adrian. When you die, how long does it take to get to heaven? What is the whole process of it all? A second, a nanosecond, or something like that. Remember, uh, Adrian, I just said that uh, time is very different. It's a very different concept here than uh, than it is um, out there uh, and in the spirit world. And um, it can take literally from the moment you leave your body. And the cord severs that we call it the silver cord and the cord severs which means that you know you're you are no longer of this earth um from that as you know leaving your body and some people take longer than others as you know so it's you know some people can be in a coma for years and years but still uh be breathing still be here still be present on this earth place some people can have uh 
a massive heart attack and, and die before they hit the ground. You know, there are lots of different ways that we die. So once that cord, that called this silver cord, once the silver cord is broken, is severed, you know, there's no coming back. You can't come back anymore. You can't come back into your physical body anymore and you're done. Once that is done, it literally is a really fast, really, really speedy process. For the most part, your angels will be there prior to that cord severing, prior to the cord snapping your angels will be there and as soon as that happens and in fact before it even happens you will i'll often hear my patients say i can feel someone lifting me I can feel i'm being lifted i'm being carried within or oh, less than a second even your angels will be there to hold you to help you and to carry you forward and from that process it's like it's so fast it's so speedy the dying process the physical body dying is the one that takes the longest but reaching that reaching the light reaching heaven as you might call it very fast very quick i hope that answers your question uh, shall we have another question from um, carolyn molly asks good morning molly i've been trying to connect and i got a lady named sonia but now i'm not sure if it was real or my imagination i don't want to insult sonia do you have a way to tell the difference? The three-time rule. That's my three-time rule. This is Molly? Yeah? Yes. The, Molly, the three-time rule. If it happens once, you know, maybe your imagination, it may be reality. You know, always question. Don't, afraid to be, don't be afraid to be skeptical, any of you out there, because it's skepticism. It's that skepticism which, you know, will tell us when something is, is really real. So if it happens a second time, pay attention. You know, maybe, maybe not, but pay more attention. If it happens a third time, my third time rule is just go with it. Go with it and see what happens from there on. But question, question, question. Be skeptical. I'm glad you are because obviously you wouldn't be asking this question if you weren't skeptical. So keep going, you know, with that skepticism. Al, do we have a question from you? Yes. Yeah, so actually kind of a follow-up with that. Andronicus asks, asks um, uh, can you have a working partnership with someone that's in the spirit world? Um, he, he or she cites plan to make business decisions together as a team, that kind of thing. Andronica, what a fabulous name. Uh, good morning, darling. Whether We don't know if you're male or female here. I wish people would tell us this you know, anyway, but there we are. Uh, but, okay, yes, of course you can have a working relationship, but you can have a business partnership. You can have someone in the spirit world who if you can make a real connection with that person, as I do with Grey Eagle, um, you know, Grey Eagle helps me in the kitchen. If I'm cooking something that I particularly don't like to eat or won't eat, because there was a phase there when I would not eat meat, and I'm thinking of going back to that phase pretty soon because I've never been more healthy. I, I ate fish but never meat, and it was brilliant. And aside from the fact that I, you know, kept myself really skinny uh it it was a, i just felt healthier and happier so when i was cooking meat for other people it's hard to imagine that i have to do without my rack of lamb but anyway uh gray eagle would i would say to gray eagle have, have i got enough salt in this or did i put enough seasoning etc etc i haven't cooked it long enough and i still do that now no matter what so yes it is possible you have to work at it though and you have to pay attention and you have to listen. But yes, those in the spirit world can help us with our business dealings, with our, you know, do we want to move or not? When people come to me for a consultation, which happens, you know, uh, quite a lot. Um, and if, by the way, you want a consultation, any of you listening out there, just email us again, rosemary at rosemaryaltea.com, and you, we can give you all the information that we have on, uh, on my consultation list. But you know, people, that's what people ask about. They want to talk to their loved ones in the spirit world, but they want their loved ones in the spirit world to help them and to guide them, which they do. Uh, you know, should I move? When am I going to move? What should I do about my business? What should I do about my partnership, my relationship, etc., etc., with my husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc., and all of that? And all of the questions that you could possibly think about life 
in your life and during your life and all the questions you need answering or help with those in the spirit world can help you tremendously so um so yes the answer is yes i think um all right i'm going to describe again for those of you who might have missed it the competition we're going to uh the competition starts now and uh, you need my email for rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. If you want to be put onto the e email list, uh, email us and request that you are put on the list, which we shall do. And then you'll get emails from us about all the sorts of things that are going on and happening and so on. And as regards the competition, you definitely need to subscribe. So if you are not a subscriber, but you want to join in this competition it's always fun to have a competition don't you think if you want to join in with this competition you need to subscribe press that little red button to subscribe and you will then be eligible if you've not subscribed you will not be eligible for any competition now or in the future so subscribe 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 now it doesn't cost you anything all right so the competition is this i want you to write a sad story uh, I want you to sit in the sad chair and I want you to sit in that sad chair and think about probably one of the worst or the saddest or the most painful stories that you have about yourself, something that happened to you personally. Then after that, I want you to sit in the happy chair, which is the same chair as the sad chair, except now we've flipped it over and we're now looking at this awfully sad story. Again, this happy story that you're going to write is the same story as the sad story but you're going to look at it you're going to flip it over and you're going to look at it from a different perspective your job is to through the sad story your job is to make me feel empathy for you and to feel sadness for you as you know as i'm sure i will because we all have a sad story your job when you're sitting and telling the same story but in the happy chair looking at the same story from a different perspective is to make me at least smile and to feel happy within myself happy for you maybe happy happy for me now we flip again and we move into the third chair which is the inspirational chair where you take that same sad story which is the same happy story and now you turn it into a story of inspiration i want you to inspire me inspire me with what you learned from the painful sad to the joyful happy inspire me i want you to i want a sad story a happy story and an inspirational story and those three stories have to be the exact same story but looked at from three different perspectives this is a great training exercise for all of you because it helps you to see that there are other ways to see a thing than you know perhaps the way you've always looked at something there are other ways if you look at something negatively or if you look at something positively or you look you're trying to find inspiration for yourself or you know with us who are parents we want to teach our children i've often told samantha a sad story and turned it into a happy one and an inspirational one without even thinking about it that's what parents do we always try to encourage our children to look at things from a great perspective that's what this exercise is about it's called the three chairs you need to head put on the top of your story head it the three chairs it doesn't matter if you don't know grammar it doesn't matter if you're a great writer or a lousy writer just spill it out there just put it out there no more than 500 words please because we are not going to be reading from now until next year all right so no more than 500 words and that uh those stories have to be in by march, march 22nd. the 22nd we shall do this again next week to remind you al let's have another question from you so this is from uh, Nathaniel or Nate, uh, I guess he goes by. Okay, good morning, Nate. Nate. Brother, Brother Nate. Nate. Okay, good morning. So uh, in relate, uh, it relates to your other question about when the body dies and cutting the cord, uh, silver cord. So he says, when the silver cord is severed, uh, does the body register, I think, uh, loss in way from the soul having departed? So I'm, I'm assuming no, the it's body, a, the body's no more doesn't have any more the body's done the body does not have any more feeling prior to the cord being severed 
you might have lots of regrets and all of that you know that's a very human quality remember as soon as the silver cord is severed your humanness your physical humanness is gone it's done the body thinks no more breathes no more feels no more the body is done and the truth of the matter is brother nate and all of you out there the truth of the matter is that you know it is our spirit it is our soul that it has all of the emotion and all of the all of the stuff that is important to us the physical body simply is our house it's the containment it's the container for the, you know the, the soul and for all of what we are thinking and feeling and and so on so no once the silver cord is severed it's it's a little bit like um you know okay we've emptied the closet close the doors it's done the closet is no more for us it's done it does not have anything left for it you know you take all the stuff out of your uh, your um what is that chest call when you you know you sort of collect a with a call hope chest hope chest that yeah whatever that is a hope chest or a marriage chest or something when you're collecting something and saving something then all of a sudden you find that what you've got in there no longer fits it's all got to come out because it's 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 obsolete we, we need a bigger space, a bigger area to live and to, to hold our stuff in. So we, you know, we empty it and we give it away or we bury it or we break it up or we use it for fire. It doesn't matter what we do with it because it's no more. It is no more and it's no of no use to us anymore. It's it, uh, sort of the sad, when you think about it, it's kind of sad to think that, you know, who you are, what you are uh, is going to be no more, but that's the way of it. There are two things that are a certainty in our lives. The one is that we're going to be born because we were. The second certainty is that we're going to die, and we're all going to do that, except I personally don't believe in death. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, let's go uh, Sorry. Oh, Alan, can I uh, follow it up? Adrian had a follow-up question to that, a really good question. Um, okay. She says, I have heard and read about people that die and go to heaven, then sent back to earth. Why is that? Is it? just not their time i think really neat question oh they've had a they've had a uh, um a, a, a near, thank you they've had a thank you thank god you're here karen <laughs> they had a near-death experience uh yes they do die but however when they die that silver cord for them to actually come back the silver cord has not been severed so they're having a near death remember the word the term near near death They've had a near-death experience, which, you know, we all, when we're in our sleep state, we're all able to travel. We're all able to sort of move around. We're all able to go and visit our loved ones in the spirit world or we're in that place where they can come and visit us, whatever is going on there. It's very interesting, this. Uh, so you could, you could almost say we have like these little deaths, uh, the mini deaths, uh, that, uh, that are not really deaths because the silver cord has not been broken. So, you know, I think... People have near-death experiences where for them, for them to learn and for them to grow, for them to have that experience. And you, you often hear people say when they've had this experience, I'm not afraid to die anymore because they've had that wonderful knowledge now that, you know, there is some other place where we can go, where we go to the light. Once the silver cord is snapped, severed, broken, whatever it is, can't come back no matter what. That is the death of the physical body. But thank you, Adrian, whoever that was, who gave that question. We're getting some great questions this morning. Um, how are you doing over there? Carolyn, let's have another question, shall we? We've got Sarah here, and, and you've spoken to Sarah quite a few times. Good morning, Sarah. I think she's under the misconception uh, that you have to wait five years before you make a connection with somebody that is lost. She stated that earlier, and now she says, I have waited the 5.5 years, done much letting oh, go. Oh, darling. Oh, darling. But some things, you know, could still heal. He heal. Sarah. And for all of you out there who think you've got to wait any time at all, I can tell you without a doubt that I have connected with people in the spirit world literally minutes after they've gone. There is no waiting period. Uh, you know, it is inevitable that we, you know, that people have these 
misconceptions because you know there are so many people out there who profess to know all and they profess to know what they're talking about and really they don't so my caution to you and i'm i'm going to include myself in this my caution to all of you out there is you know don't just because someone says it is doesn't mean that it is and that applies to me too maybe i'll go up there and i'm laughing because greg was laughing at me because i was going to say maybe when i die uh, I'll get there and I've got it all wrong. I don't think so though because he's laughing at me Especially with this five point something rule whoever whoever got that in their head and however this is being uh, put out there is Absolute utter pure nonsense and I'm only very very sorry Sarah that you and many many others have gotten caught up in this supposed truth because the truth is, and I know this because of my own experience, and I and I would never ever give anyone false hope. It does sometimes take people a little while to make a connection. When I say a little while, I might mean hours or I might mean weeks, but I certainly don't mean years. Um, but it, but the reason that it might take a little while is because that person might be nervous. Or it might take a little while because the person they're using, i.e. someone like myself, uh, is either not able to hear properly, not able to see properly, and there's a lot of nervousness going on or what have you. But that is the only way someone in the spirit world will, will have difficulty connecting. The desire to connect is there from the word go. Think about it. If you have someone here in this on this earth who you love and adore i'm thinking of my daughter and my grandson as i'm saying this to you it's his birthday coming up next week we're so excited about it but anyway that's a whole other thing but if you have someone who you worship and do you adore and then you die what is the first thing you want to do you want to reassure them you want to say i'm okay you want to make the connection and you will try and do that in whatever way you can Goodness, if I had to hold off for five years when I die, there's no, it's not happening. It's not happening. I will be there as soon as I can in the next instant, if possible, sending a sign, giving some indication that I'm okay because I know that my darlings will be devastated and they will want to hear from me and my mission in my next life would be to first and foremost above all else is to reassure them and to let them know that i'm okay so let's not have any more of this these misconceptions about time and the hundred years for this and the five point something years for that because it is nonsense i hope i've hope i've helped you sarah i hope i've not upset you so, i'm so worried now that you're upset because you've waited five and a half years but it doesn't matter because however long you have to wait when you do it, in the end, it's worth it, don't you think? Right, brother Nate. Good morning, brother. This is yeah. A, well, and he's, the, he's saying he means does the body lose some weight when the soul leaves? So, oh, then does the body leave weight? Does it matter? Who cares? It's done with, over and done. We don't care. I don't know if ever anybody weighed someone prior to their dying and then immediately after. So, I don't know. He has that. a great question. Who? Dean. Good morning. I was wondering where you were. Good morning, Dean. He's in the background helping out, giving <laughs> suggestions to oh, people, telling he's them so to check great. out this video. He is great. He's so great. All okay. right. If someone is mentally challenged, do they gain back their thinking ability when they die? That's a great question, actually, Dean. But then again, I'm looking to Gray Eagle here for this to be to, to certainly to sort of be reassured that i'm thinking the right way and i would say that mentally challenged uh that is that is very much a human thing the soul is never mentally challenged uh the soul is always on board on point and when we have uh someone in our lives who is mentally challenged it's as well for us to remember that oh golly it's as well for us to remember that that was my daughter calling sorry about that it's as well for us to remember that
that even though on a physical level someone is challenged emotionally spiritually in every way to do with the soul and the spirit there is it everything is fine everything is perfect so when we talk to someone who is mentally challenged we might want to remember that and to remember that their understanding is far greater and their understanding will come from the way you show love to them the way you show compassion to way the way you hold them and talk to them remember that it's important yes what are your thoughts on the soul having a weight there's oh, now uh, a discussion uh, that the soul weighs a few ounces oh you are lovely all of you i love you to pieces i love this discussion you're you're really into this um all right I'm going to throw this one to you all if you really want a discussion. The weight of the soul, and I'm talking to Greg, or we've we've had this, you know, this discussion a little bit, not quite it, perhaps the way you would have it, but yes, we've had this discussion before. The weight of the soul has to do with the emotion and the the uh, the burdens, not the actual pounds and ounces. The weight of the soul has to do with the emotions that it carries. The lessons that it carries, the the need for growth, the the you know the point where the the soul may be struggling to grow. The weight is not in the pounds and ounces. The weight is in the bird, the burden of the soul, the emotions of the soul, the 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 thinking of the soul, all of those things. So if you want to put a weight on the soul, don't think of it in pounds and ounces. Thinking of Think of it as in the traumas or the experiences, the pain, uh, the carrying. You know, when we are burdened with our pain and our heartache, there's no way you can take that pain and that burden and put it on a scale and weigh it in pounds and ounces, is there? The weight is a pressure. It's a heaviness of the soul or a lightness and a loving and a lightness of the soul. Think about it that. I'd like to hear what people have to say about that. That would be fun. That makes yeah. sense, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all lovely. I love you to pieces. All right, now, Al? Yeah, what? Denise would like to know the story behind the tiles behind your head. Oh, oh Denise. Um, those tiles are very old, ancient Roman tiles. They were a gift to me from a very dear friend of mine in Italy. They signify, um, believe it or not, fire, earth, there are four of them, fire, earth, air, and um, earth. Did I say earth already? Air, fire, wait a minute, they're the, they're the, four, the four soul roots, fire, earth, water, and uh, water. water, thank you, earth, and water. The, the four elements that we have, that's what they are. And uh, and that's all I'm saying about that. Al, do you have another question for us? Quick question. Uh, no, it looks like it for today. Scrolling okay. Through. I think that's about it. Okay. Carolyn, do you have anything? Nothing unless you'd, you'd like to try to give somebody a message. Go ahead. Starshine68. <gasps> Starshine 68 says, Rosemary and Grey Eagle, can you tell me if my brother is guiding me on my journey towards the spirit world? Uh, so easy to just say yes, isn't it? And again, I'm asking Grey Eagle this. Um, this has to be a quick message, but I do have a young man. I did tell you earlier, my living room is full of people. Uh, and I know I don't give messages, but here I go again. But yes, um, I do have a young man here. And what is this lady's name? Starshine. Star, Starshine. Man or woman, I don't know. But anyway, um, Starshine works for me. Uh, I feel that I have a, a young man who is definitely connecting with you, who was very troubled when he was here on this earth. And had lots of issues and lots of, uh, you know, we talk about the weight of the soul, lots of weight, lots of heavy weight, emotional heavy weight on his shoulders. And he's looking at me. I'm to tell you that he's fine. And of course, he is your angel 
and that he's guiding you and steering you along your path. I, I do feel that you've asked this question knowing the answer, but I'm simply confirming that for you, but that's okay too. And he sends lots and lots of love and wishes you all the happiness. There's some sort of a birthday or an anniversary coming up that he tells mm. what? I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Oh. There's some sort of a, a birthday or an anniversary coming up. He wants you to know that he's going to be a part of that and to celebrate because he'll be celebrating with you. Uh, Carolyn, what? A very quick, very interesting question. All right. It was one of the very first questions <laughs> I asked you when I met you. Okay. Can you... Uh, um, when you're out before in public, but just for starshine i hope that helps you darling uh all right when you're out in public are you drawn to give messages to people of course all the time all the time but the rule is this i never do it unless i'm asked so even though i'm so tempted and you know i have lots and lots of stories about you know one particular one where i did well two actually i'm thinking of i was in a pub once and somebody's tapping me on the shoulder in the spirit world saying that's you know that's that's my wife just tell them okay and you can't do that because it's you know people might not want it and uh, my the last thing i want to do is to uh harm someone or to cause anyone distress or to you know to have someone to shock someone so you know in order to get a message from someone like me i believe this is only me this is i don't go around willy-nilly giving messages out because you don't know the harm you're doing and the most important thing that a medium has to remember is responsibility what i do changes people's lives affects people's hearts and can either bring an extreme joy or if you're not careful thorough misery and just giving out willy-nilly to people you don't know messages without them first asking you if you can see anything for them or anyone for them is completely and utterly irresponsible. I do not approve that practice. But yes, all the time. I can go into a supermarket and I see, you know, an old woman with her daughter. and She tells me she's been crying and crying and crying. She just wants to know I'm okay. I can't do it. I won't do it unless... There are odd and very mild exceptions every now and again when I just have to interfere, but mostly it's irresponsible and I don't do it. Any other question, Al? Do you have anything else to say? Uh, one last from Denise. Uh, Denise wants to know if uh, praying through song makes the spirits happier or happier than a normal prayer. If what? Frank from? Praying through a song, through singing. If what from what? <laughs> so if some so if someone is praying, uh, if they're singing the prayer, as in like a church oh, or something oh, like sorry. that. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry. I misunderstood you. Sorry. Of course, Denise. I sing all the time. I'm always singing all around the house. When we are laughing, when we are singing, when we are joyful, that's when our light, our aura shines the best and shines the brightest and encourages those in the spirit world to come see what we're about. You know, they want to join in with our joy and our laughter. They want to see and to share with us what makes us joyful. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I... I sing all the time. I encourage everybody else. Even if you've got a lousy voice, it doesn't matter. The spirit world recognizes your joy and recognizes your energy. Um, when my daughter was uh, <laughs> my daughter was young, uh, we used to at Christmas time we used to go into the church, and uh, you know the the uh, parents would be in the congregation, and the kids would be up at the top by the altar and everything. That and we'd sing Christmas carols and. Uh, and uh, at some point, you could guarantee every single year, you could guarantee that one kid would lean over to Samantha and whisper in her ear, I hear your mother's here. Because they could hear my voice singing out there. So if you're going to sing, sing with joy. Let go. Sing, as, uh, with, your, sing with your heart uh, as well as with your lungs. Carolyn, anything else? I think we're good. Thank you all for joining us. I had fun. Uh, I hope you're going to join the competition again. I remind you all entries must be in by March 22nd. It seems like a long way away, but it really isn't. 
my grandson's fifth birthday is coming up in uh, 10 days time or yeah 10 days time the 12th of february so i'm excited about that i'm sorry i've met i I meant to get the sweater. Get the sweater quick, Carolyn. Get oh no, it's all wrapped up. I'll show you next oh, week. Yeah. I'll show you next week because it's sort of I'm making him a red sweater by his request. He wants to wear it at his party. He wants to wear it on his birthday, and he also wants to wear it. Uh, I got to turn that off. Sorry about that. Forgot to turn my phone off. And he also wants to wear it on Valentine's Day. It's gorgeous, actually, this beautiful red sweater. I'll show you next week. Remind me next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to be on our email list, rosemary at rosemaryaldare.com, you have got to request that we put you on the email list, and then we shall do that. Uh, the email list is worth going on to because we will be sending emails out to all of you, letting you know what's going on, what's going on with the competition, what's going on with the membership stuff, what's going on with all of that new stuff coming and going with us. Um, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. We are all over the place. We're everywhere we can possibly be. So if you'd like to connect with us anywhere at all, please feel free. Again, rosemary at rosemaryaltair.com. I hope you enjoyed this morning with us. It was fun having Al here. Hopefully there was not nearly as much noise in the background as there was last week. And Maggie, let us know how it was for you, please. Uh, in the meantime, until next week, please, please, please have a very, 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 there's that little arrow, blessed. <laughs>